welcome to my kitchen. Obviously, another fun, exciting day in my kitchen. So today we're gonna basically make lemon chicken with artichokes and oregano. Oh, does that sound great? In Italiano, it's called polo al limone con carciofo. Doesn't that sound great? It sounds sexier in Italian, doesn't it? I don't know. Okay guys, let's get cooking. Let's go over ingredients. Let's have some fun. So first and foremost, you're gonna want some chicken. So essentially what you're gonna want is you're gonna want four chicken thighs with the leg and you're gonna separate them. So here I've got four thighs separated from the drumstick. So four drumsticks, four thighs. Next, we're gonna need artichokes. So carciofo. So in artichokes, what I've got here is two artichoke hearts quartered. So you can either buy those pre-made, you can get them in a can, you can get them in a jar, or you can cook your own artichoke, steam them, and then just, again, take that heart out and quarter it. We're going to want the zest of a lemon and then the juice of two whole lemons. We're going to take two whole onions, starting to sound really good now, right? And I'm going to want maybe a tablespoon of flat Italian parsley. Often parsley is viewed as, as something just to kind of decorate something with, but it really is a great herb. It's very peppery, very grassy, and it's got a little bit of a lemon, a little bit of a lemon kick uh, on the back end. We've got oregano. Oregano is a big part of this. So we're going to want a good two to three tablespoons of fresh oregano. So, oh, oregano is great. So oregano is very, very earthy, and it's got a backdrop of a, of a little bit of, a, of an herb. Uh, like a, a little bit of a grass flavor to it. Um, in oregano, if you don't have fresh oregano, you're always going to cut your dry ingredient in half. Why dry ingredients are much more concentrated. So, so let's call it two to three tablespoons of fresh oregano. You're going to use one, one and a half tablespoons of dry oregano. Okay. Garlic, we're going to only want one clove. I mean, ideally, we should have this. Oh, it smells so good. We should have this whole bulb. <laughs> but uh, I just thought it looked great on the table. But uh, we're going to want one clove of garlic. We're going to want one bay leaf. A bay leaf is very earthy, so it's, it gives you that really nice base to any types of stocks or stews. A very important ingredient. Here we're going to do some paprika. Now in paprika, we're going to use one teaspoon. Paprika is going to be very smoky and earthy, and it's going to give you that that backdrop of pepper, it's great. I, it's, a very, it's very subtle in how it flavors the chicken and it's not gonna overpower the flavors. We're gonna want some chicken stock. So here we've got, I'm gonna call it a fat cup. So we want just over a cup of chicken stock. We're gonna flour the chicken. So we're gonna want at least two, if not three, tablespoons of flour. I'm a big fan of the pastry flour in this case, or you can use an all-purpose flour cake flour, it's fine, low protein content. Now we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna want about two and a half to three tablespoons of this stuff right here. And we're gonna use some port wine. You can use a ruby or a tawny, but I've got three tablespoons here because we're gonna get a little naughty. We got three tablespoons of a port wine. Just remember, if you're concerned about alcohol content, there will be zero alcohol content because it's all gonna burn off. However, with the alcohol, the alcohol acts almost as like a solvent. So as a solvent, it enables it to extract flavors from the food that you wouldn't normally be able to get. If for any reason you want to put zero alcohol for your personal preference or for religious purposes, by all means. So just increase your chicken stock by two to three tablespoons. Next, as always, we're going to need some salt. What do I got here? Pink Himalayan. Why? Earthy, briny, and it's sexy. Pink sexy, guys, come on. Next, another pepper. So we've got a paprika, but we're gonna want some fresh ground pepper. So always, if possible, go with the fresh ground pepper. Gives you those oils, it's gonna be really delicious. Yes, we're gonna use some olive oil in here. I'm gonna want, um, I wanna want Italian, because it's an Italian dish. I want something grassy, earthy, peppery, something delicious, some extra virgin. Where would I go? Huh, oh my God, look what this is. So anyone new to our channel, I own a farm in Italy with my boys. It's just above the heel. It's in Puglia, Italy, and we make uh, our own olive oil. We co-op with a group of farms to bring you some of the best olive oil you're ever gonna have. And if you go right at the link above or below, go right on my website or my Facebook page, Cooking Italian with Joe, click the Buy It Now link, we'll drop ship you a bottle 
right to your front doorstep. I think of it as a trip to Italy. So maybe you want to go to Italy, maybe you don't. But boy, it's a trip to Italy right in a bottle. Okay, guys, enough of the chat and let's get cooking. Time to prep the chicken. First thing we want to understand, we always want to season in layers. So I've got my chicken here. I want to season the chicken first before I dust it and prep it. Real simple, guys, I'm going to take my pink Himalayan and I'm going to go ahead and season the chicken with some salt and then some fresh ground pepper. And then I'm going to flip it. Now I'm going to take the salt again. So I want to season both sides of the chicken. Hit it with some pepper. Guys, chicken season. Next, guys, take a pan. We're going to use this to dust the chicken. And I'm going to take my flour, my three tablespoons of flour. I'm going to take about a quarter teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit more. And my black pepper, quarter teaspoon. And then stir it around. Now, guys, I'm going to dust the chicken. So real fast, guys, take a drumstick and just give it a light dusting and shake it off really good. And then just put it on a different plate. Chicken is dusted. Now we're going to go prep our pan. Now, I find the cast iron to be the perfect pan. So this is ideally the perfect porcelain pan to do it. If not, a simple cast iron fry pan will work. This, I like, it's got the higher sides. It makes it easier and it's got a little bit more room. So I'm going to get this hot with some oil. So I'm going to put about two to three tablespoons of oil in there. Obviously, Vito and Joe's. And I want to turn the heat up to medium to a high medium because I want to get this hot because I want to sear that chicken. Guys, the pan is hot, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that chicken right in there. And our goal here is to get this nice and golden brown. I want that crispy golden brown on the outside. Guys, it's been about five minutes, so I'm going to flip the chicken, and that's what we're looking for. That's going to give me a nice flavor, and it's going to add a lot of that flour into my fat, and that's going to allow me to create a nice roux to thicken the sauce near the end. And what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to pull these out. I'm going to repeat the browning process with the three pieces that I have left. Guys, while I'm prepping the rest of the chicken and getting everything brown and golden, I want to get my onions, garlic, and lemons Lemone is ready to go. Let's get started on the onions. Now I'm looking for a really nice fine chop. So just cut the onion in half. You're going to notice that's the heel of the onion. So we want to keep that intact. Just trim the top of it. Give it a quick peel. And now we want to give it a fine set of slices. So again, if you want a big chop, you're going to go with bigger slices. Some finer chop, just go with smaller slices. And now we're just going to give it a cross cut. We don't want big chunks of onion in there. We want the onions to almost emulsify as I cook it. Guys, next I'm going to grab a clove of garlic here. This is going to be real simple. So what I'm going to do is just cut the bottom off, cut the top off, give it a good smush, pull your skin off. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to give it a good smash in. And it'll kind of fall apart. And then give it a little cut. Oh, doesn't that look good? I'm going to put that right in my onion pile. Next, guys, I'm going to take some lemon zest. So I'm going to take the zest of one lemon. Isn't that beautiful? And now I'm going to take that lemon zest. I'm going to put that right in my pile of onions. And then I'm going to cut the onion in half just to prep it. Cut the other onion in half. So guys, I want the juice of both lemons. And I'm good to go. I've got my juice. I've got my onions, my garlic, my lemon zest. Oh, we're ready to go. My chicken's done. Now I want to cool this pot. So I'm going to let this pot cool for a few minutes. And now I want to start cooking my onions, my zest, my garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a nice stir. This is going to help to glaze your pot. So the moisture from the onion as they cook down will help clean your pot. See how those nice brown little bits of goodness. We're going to give this probably about five minutes. We want to sweat the onions, get some good translucency, as well as the garlic and the lemon. OK, guys, it's been a few minutes here. The onions, garlic, lemon. Oh, I'll tell you, the aroma here is just fantastic. Guys, the onions, the garlic, the lemon zest, perfect, ready to go. So to give you a tip, just get all your ingredients ready to go. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate everything in the pot. And you're going to need a nice, tight-fitting lid for the top to get this thing to cook and just get tender and uh, delicious. A couple other tips to make this come out absolutely fantastic. Red subscribe button, click that right there. And what it does is any, um, any trips, any notifications, blogging with Boreo, all that information will come right to you as a notification. And I'll tell you, it means a lot to me when you subscribe to the channel. And hey, it makes you part of the family. As far as olive oil, it's right there. I'm sure you guys, you you already clicked the link, you're ready to go. All right, so what do you say? Let's start adding some chicken and some flavors. I'm going to add my port. Boy, the aroma of that is fantastic. I'm going to add my lemon juice. Beautiful. I'm going to add my paprika, that smoky pepper flavor. I'm going to add my artichokes. I'll just go delicate because we don't want to break them up too much. I'm going to add my bay leaf. While that's warming up, I'm just going to go ahead and add my leaves of oregano. Just pull back. Leaves come right off. Something kind of fun to do while everything's warming up. Oregano's in. Give it a nice stir. Now I've got my parsley. What I did is just pull the leaves. And just this is kind of an old rustic 
move, but you're just gonna tear up the parsley. And now give that a nice stir. And now we're gonna add back our chicken. So situate the chicken. Just get some of the stuff in the bottom off. Get that chicken in there. And then pull up some of the artichokes and all the onions over the top. And then just spread some of that across. Doesn't all need to be touching the bottom, guys. Last but not least, guys, I like to add my stock. So I like to add my stock right at the end. And now, guys, adjust your heat to a low medium. And then you want that tight-fitting lid. Seal that right up, and we're looking at about 30 minutes. Okay, everything's sealed up, guys. That's my lemon chicken with artichoke burn prevention mechanism. I'll talk to you guys in 30 minutes. Guys, been 35 minutes. Oh, ho, ho. Look at that. I'll tell you, the aroma, just fantastic. That is absolutely perfect. At this point, I'm going to plate the chicken first, and then what I'm going to do is just take the juices with the artichokes and the lemon, Take that last bit of parsley, give it a final dusting. First off, the aroma in the kitchen. Oh man, that is good. Ugh. So you got the artichokes and the, and the olive oil and the salt and the pepper and the paprika and the chicken. Oh, just so great with that oregano, which has got that soft flavor just coming through. Totally delicious. I got Gene Kelly playing in the background. I mean, you can't go wrong with that, I'm just going to say. And obviously my favorite time of any video is to taste it. All right. Oh, look at that. I want to grab an artichoke or two. I want to grab some of that lemon. Oil, onion, sauce. So this should be really tender and moist. You can already see that it is. Look at that. And just see how it just falls apart? So you gotta get that perfect bite. You gotta get an artichoke. The artichoke's gonna be so tender. If I could give you that right now, guys, I'd do it. I swear to you, I would do it. Smell-a-vision, taste-a-vision. When's that coming? I'll tell you what's surprising is the aroma of the chicken really overpowers everything. And then a little bit of the oregano and the lemon. Mmm, 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 oh my God. That is divine. The chicken's so tender and moist. And you get the chicken, the lemon, and you, your mouth is just filled, your nose is filled with the aroma. The oregano is just perfect. With paprika, you can't even taste paprika, but you get that hint, that kind of that smoky pepper, you know? But it's so mild. And the backdrop of the onions, the garlic, the lemon, absolutely delicious. And what's nice is the onions have cooked down so beautifully, it just takes that bite away, you know? It adds to the flavor. It doesn't overpower the flavor at all. I got a nice piece of artichoke in the second piece. I'll tell you, if you gotta be in your house over the next couple of weeks, that's a good recipe to make with your family. And guys, thanks for joining me for a fun, simple, easy, delicious, flavorful recipe right from Italy. You like what we're doing in the kitchen? Remember, hit that subscribe button. Hey, make your part of the family. Hit the link above or below. Go to the website, Cook in Italian Joe. Order yourself a bottle of extra virgin Italian Vito and Joe's olive oil right from Puglia, Italy. Trip to Italy right in a bottle. And guys, my most important tip, especially through this challenging time for all of us, you know, get around the table frequently with your family. Spend time telling stories. Make a mess, burn a few things in the kitchen. I'll tell you what, I'll give you something to talk about, no doubt about it, right? And celebrate your heritage. And most importantly, guys, set some traditions that last you a lifetime. I know they did for me. Hey, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, guys, mwah, bon appetit, though.